Hello and welcome everyone to Biblio Video. This is the YouTube channel all about Canadian kids books. My name is Spencer Miller and today I'm so excited to be here with Yewande Daniel Ayoade. Um, Yewande is a, uh, a business, uh, a management consultant with a bachelor's degree in economics, a master's degree in business administration. After two decades in various consulting ro roles, she published her first children's book in 2019. Um, also important to Yawande's story is that after immigrating first to the United States in 2003 and then to Canada in 2010, where she now lives in Calgary and is a fellow Calgarian with me, um, her writing focuses on introducing children to West African history and culture. So we are so thankful to have you with us today, Yawande. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Um, we're here, of course, today to primarily talk about your upcoming picture book, Little Regent, which I'm so excited about. And I saw on your social media that you are on a bit of a media tour that you talked to CTV and some local news channels today. So how are you feeling about the release of your next big picture book? I am so excited for how this book has been received. And yes, you're right. I talked to CTV and there's also going to be an article in the Calgary Herald on Saturday. So I'm really excited um, for how much attention this book has gotten. That's wonderful. I'm so excited to hear that it's receiving a lot of attention. It's really well-deserved. Um, could you share in your own words a little bit of what Little Regent is all about? Sure. So the little regent is about an eight-year-old girl called Adiyoshi who becomes the ruler of her village. And there's a little bit of Yoruba tradition and history that has to do with that. Um, and she's unsure of herself. The adults are unsure of her because like, she's eight and she's a girl. Um, so she goes through a series, a season of self-doubt, but with her mother's help and remembering her father's late words, she's able to discover for herself what true, true leadership looks like. That's a perfect summary. Um, the book has a lot of really strong and positive messages, which is so great. I wanted to ask you, what inspired you to write this story? It's not your first picture book, so where did this idea start? Well, several things came together to form the idea for the story. First is that I'm a mom of five, and my three youngest kids were going through this princess phase where all they would watch on TV with princess shows. And I remember watching them one day, watching these shows and thinking to myself, where's the African princess, you know? Wouldn't it be so neat to have a princess that's African with a story that's African as well to go along with it? And of course, being a writer, right? If you don't see what you want written, then you write it yourself. So that's kind of where the story started from. But it also happened to be during election season where politicians were behaving badly, so to speak, <laughs> on TV. And so when I was trying to think about what the theme of the story should be, I thought about just the bad examples of leadership we'd had. And also this uh, Bible verse that I love so much that says, if you want to be great, you should first be a servant. And then all of that together kind of formed the theme of the story, which is servant leadership. It's wonderful. And the, the theme comes through really strongly. I love that you said um, it came up during election season. You're, you're right that um, the world needs better leaders and we need little leaders, young kids to be learning these lessons. Um, exactly. And so can you dive into that a little bit more? What do you hope that little readers feel and, and what do you hope that they learn when they read your story? Well, there's two key things that I want them to take away from the story. I think the first is that regardless of your gender, you can do whatever you want. Um, so Beauty is a girl in Yoruba land today. Um, girls can be regents, they can't be kings. This is my subversive way of maybe contributing to seeing that culture change. And then generally having all kids read the story knowing it doesn't matter, you can be whatever you set your heart upon to be. But the other lesson in here, like you said, is around what does a true leader look like? I know we celebrate a lot of bravado, a lot of machismo, you mm -hmm. know, in the media today, but I want them to know that true leaders listen, they show empathy. They care about people. They leave people better off than they started. And that's kind of the message I hope they'll take away. It's a little heavy, mm -hmm. but hopefully it's in a kid-friendly story. Absolutely. I, I think it really shines through. I think it's a story that's really going to appeal to little leaders. It's really an empowering story um, yeah. for, for everyone. I think especially young girls. I think that they'll really connect and, and love that message that they can lead and they should be in charge. 
Um, and as well, I think, but every time, um, well, of course, some some little readers are reading on their own, but for those who aren't, there's always an adult behind the picture, right, reading to them, a parent, a teacher, a librarian, a caregiver, grandparent, whoever it may be. Um, and I think there's a message in this book for them, too. What is it that you hope that adult readers um, maybe get uh, when they're sharing it with their, their little people in their lives? Yeah, and you're right, same as children out love adults as they read this to their kids to think as well about what leadership means and what types of examples of leaders they're showing to their kids so that as a, as a, as a whole or you know as a society we can start to show kids as they grow older what true leaders should look like and i also want adults to take away from this story that encouragement for their kids as well that it doesn't matter what gender they are um, it doesn't matter what limitations they imagine that they have. If they set their heart to do something, they can accomplish it. And I think that's a message for us as adults as well, mm -hmm. not just for kids. Totally. I, I see that all the time in my years that I had in, in the classroom as a teacher. Um, I just felt so much that uh, as a society, we would be better off if we listened better to the young people in our communities and gave them opportunities to be leaders. And so yes, I love them a that. Voice. Yes, and I love that part in your story that um, there are these older uh, men in the background of the story who at first are very skeptical and aren't supportive and, and almost try and get in the way of Abby Oye and what she's doing. Um, but by the end of the story, everyone kind of comes around to the idea of her as a leader. Yeah, because in this story, just like in life, we can be slaves to culture and tradition, to the way things have always been done. And sometimes we just it's worthwhile to take a step back and say, should we be doing it differently? If we know better, should we be doing better? And I hope that's that's a message as well from this book. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, your background. Uh, of course, you've worked in business and consulting, management, administration, and you've done lots of studies. And so was it part of that background that was helpful in writing a story about leadership? I would say for sure, because I do lead teams at work. And that's my goal when I lead, is to make people better than the way I met them, is to be generous in sharing knowledge. It's an encouraging people, right? I don't think that leaders, both in work and in life or in politics, anywhere, should lord it over other people. I think the leader should be truly have that title of chief servant. And that for sure played into my writing of the story. That's great. Um, and of course, another um, fantastic part of the book is the illustrations. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of, of Ken Daly and his illustration yes. style. It's, yes. it's really great. It's a beautiful book to look at. So I wanted to ask you, what was your reaction um, when you first saw the illustrations? How does that feel as an author to, to see it come to life? Huge shout out to Ken Daly. He did an amazing job with this book. I first saw those illustrations when they were pencil sketches. And even when they were sketches, I could tell that this was just gonna be a beautiful book. The detail in the story, for those who don't know, Ken is not African. Ken is from the Caribbean, even though he is a black uh, illustrator. But the research that he put into it, getting the clothes, the, the environment, everything perfectly right. It was it's just beautiful. I, I loved it from the first minute I saw it. That's wonderful. Um, I love you mentioned, it comes up in the details and in the story, this African culture, um, the whole world really feels alive on the page. And I love that you're sharing part of West African culture and history and your storytelling. Um, why was it important for you to share uh, West African culture and history with young Canadian readers? Uh, so uh, I've heard books described as mirrors and windows. Right? Mm -hmm. So they're mirrors in the sense that they allow you to see yourself in books. And when you're a child who comes from a culture that's not represented in books, then you don't feel seen. So from that perspective, it was important to me that my kids and kids from similar cultures could see themselves represented in the pages of their book. But they're also windows. So other Canadian kids who are not from West Africa can get an insight into what that culture looks like. But they get it in a story that shares something that they can relate to. So my goal in my books is that people can see and celebrate a different culture, but they can also see how we're all the same or similar in spite of our differences. 
That's great. I love the um, mirrors and windows analogy. Um, if I remember from my university days, that comes from Dr. Rudin Sim Bishops, who's a Black children's literature scholar. So very appropriate yes. um, to bring it up here. Um, and I do think the book achieves that goal of, I think it'll be a, an empowering read for lots of young Black readers. And for other readers, it's going to be a window to peer into this, this culture and this history um, that really is exciting and colorful on the page. And there's so many important lessons there for all young readers. So thank you so much for writing the story and sharing it with it's Canadian my readers. It's my pleasure. It's been so wonderful to see this book received. I look forward to seeing so many more readers read it. That's so great. Well, we are so excited for Little Regent. We're also so excited for everything else you have coming up as an author. We love that you're part of the Canadian Kidlit community, Yawande. Um, what else do you have on the way? What else should we be looking out for? Oh, well, so my next book after this is coming out in two years. It's okay. also by All Kids Books, and it's called Jalof War. And I won't spoil that one yet, mm -hmm. but it's going to be fun. That's so great, but it's good to know that there's more coming. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. Um, we are so excited about the release of The Little Regent, and we'll make sure that everyone's looking out for it. And thank you for your time. Thanks for having me, Spencer. All right.